The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is the first Zelda in a while that I bought and was really worried about playing. Like everyone else, I saw the trailer during the Nintendo Direct, and as cool as it might have been to be playing a Zelda who's reorganizing furniture to platform the area, I wasn't completely sold on that whole game style of being an actual Zelda game, and it felt a little more to me like a spin-off of a Zelda game. To give you guys some context, I'm a huge Zelda fan who's played every single one to date, with only a few that I honestly just couldn't get into or complete. I think like Four Swords and maybe that Spirit Tracks game. But I mean, other than that, the idea of a Zelda game, especially one that's a top-down 2D style one, got me. Because as much as I do love those open world style Zeldas like Ocarina of Time, I also appreciate just how great and fun those 2D games are like A Link to the Past and even the Minish Cap were in comparison. All of those initial worries were gone the second the game started. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is really a Zelda successor where not only do you finally play as Zelda like in the title, but the style of the game really is more so a love letter to all of the other Zelda games that came out in the past. It brings back things that we've missed like linear dungeons and items that you need to complete those dungeons, but it does it in a new and refreshing way. As a heads up, I've only recorded gameplay from the first three dungeons. I'm going to be avoiding story spoilers here because as simple as the story might be, I do think there is some nuance to it that a lot of Zelda fans will appreciate. Once the game boots up, you do get to play as Link with all of his power in a boss battle with someone that's a little familiar. Link saves Zelda only to fall victim to a rift, which by the way have been kind of opening all across Hyrule with these monsters that are coming out. Link re-emerges from the rift, but he's this shadow slash evil version of himself. As you're escaping and you make it back to Hyrule Castle, that rift also takes over your father, the King of Hyrule, as well as the general right and minister left, the king's right and left hands, rightfully named. Evil shadow versions come out of the rift and the king basically imprisons you, claiming that you're the one that started these rifts. You get the help of this mysterious fairy named Tri that only you and anyone who's saved from these rifts can actually see. You break out of Hyrule Castle's jail and you set off to stop the rifts that were forming in Hyrule in order to save the mysterious swordsman that saved you. This is basically the story in a nutshell, but don't worry, things do expand and they get a little more complicated just like in typical Zelda fashion. I do appreciate here that this isn't just Link who's reskinned. You really play a Zelda here in just about every way. The tri rod that you get is key not only in changing up how the combat works, but also the puzzles. Echoes of Wisdom embraces what Breath of the Wild did, encouraging you to solve puzzles in your own way. There are a lot of moments that I figured something out that just didn't feel like it was the right way I was supposed to have figured it out, but I mean that freedom is what makes this game unique, and it also makes it fun. You're able to create these things called echoes of things just like beds, tables, and even monsters. When you summon these echoes, they use some of Tri's power, which, as you complete dungeon, does grow, but it also limits you from being able to flood the world with just necromancer-style copies of things. When it comes to the platforming aspect, you're able to stack up tables, you're able to use beds as platforms or different types of like staircases. You're not only copying the furniture, I mean you do get cool things like water blocks that you're able to swim in that are actually key for the water dungeon, by the way. That's another thing that I'm also really happy about here. I mean, as an OG Zelda fan, I didn't mind the whole lack of the whole normal style dungeons that we were getting in Breath of the Wild. But I can't say that I didn't miss exploring a dungeon, getting a key item, and being able to solve puzzles in different rooms, getting this boss key, and making it my way all the way to the boss of the dungeon. We are back, guys. We're completely back here. We've got those auto-locking rooms that you walk into and different puzzles. You'll usually get an echo that is key to solving most of the puzzles in the dungeon, and you'll even get some kind of cool powers for try that helps you grab and move things. It's almost like an ultra hand from Tears of the Kingdom. I really did enjoy solving the puzzles here, especially with the added creativity of Zelda's overwhelming arsenal of copies. The one thing that felt a little off here though is the combat system, but I do think it does get better when you unlock the sword form after I think the first dungeon, but I mean don't quote me on that, it's, it's really early, just not sure if it was the first or second. Zelda relies on monsters that fight for her, and you'll eventually find a few that you really like to use. I was spamming the Peabody that was just going around spinning and just destroying things. But, you know, you'll get your favorites. Combat involves you summoning this monster and sitting back while they slowly attack each other. It's really just that simple, and honestly, it's a little boring. I mean, you are able to throw different rocks at them, or pots, or even just summon those rocks and pots, or more creations. But in my opinion, 
Zelda really just felt very underpowered and just relied completely on summons. The sword form that I mentioned earlier is an unlock where she basically turns into Link and is able to swing his sword, as well as other things that I'm not going to fully spoil, but for a limited time. You can upgrade this, make it stronger, or make it even last longer by finding power crystals in the dungeons, as well as hidden across the world. Sometimes they're behind plants, sometimes they're on top of trees or in chests. The sword form does help with the combat, but again, it does feel really, really limited at first until you're able to upgrade it and make it last a little longer. I will say, I think it would have been pretty nice if Zelda had something, maybe even like a stun, uh, just somewhere for us to be involved in combat just a little bit without having to switch forms. But I mean, if we think back, most Necromancer classes have some kind of attack, but they do rely on their creations to fight for them. So that does feel like it's something that's missing. Now, as the game opens up, it does the same iconic thing that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom did. It shows you just how vast this world is for you to explore. The world is a lot bigger than you think, especially because of the 2D style world. There are pieces of hearts to find, ingredients to make smoothies that function just like the food in Breath of the Wild, power crystals to upgrade the swordsman form, and even side quests that'll pay you in items or echoes that are actually really useful in the dungeons. It makes a true difference here because not only are these optional, but the rewards are actually really, really helpful. At least for me overall, I mean, I am a side quest kind of guy, I do complete anything I see when it comes to these types of games, but I do hate when those missions feel like a waste of time with really crappy rewards. When it comes to the environments, they're all varied as well. You've got a Zora area, there's different mountain tops, there's desert biomes. I mean, there's a variety of areas to explore, just like in typical Zelda fashion, each with their own secrets, different hearts to find, and even these stamps from this weird Tingle guy, who's kind of like a copy, but not really, and mini games that you're able to complete for rewards as well. I know people are going to hate on the Funko Pop style art that they've gone with with this game, but at least for me guys, I mean I really didn't mind. I think as long as the game's graphics just aren't crappy, I can appreciate the art style. Whether they go in a realistic or a cartoon like Zelda, it does not matter to me. I think the art style does suit the 2D gameplay that they're going for. And I mean besides the art, the music just like in every Zelda game is memorable, it's catchy, it feels really nostalgic here. The tunes all feel like variations of like past songs in different games, and they all suit the area that you're in. If you ask me, Zelda has always had the best music when it comes to all of their games, and I really, really miss the Ocarina or Wind Waker days where the music was kind of like a focus when it came to the puzzles. So here's hoping that comes back too. Besides the combat being a little dull, one thing I do have to mention is just how bad the frame rate is in the game. I don't think it's as big as Tears of the Kingdom, I mean, maybe my eyes have just gotten so much better from all the PC gaming that I've been doing, but whatever devs were actually working on optimizing this one, they definitely don't feel like the same devs from Tears of the Kingdom. The game's frame rate when it came to the open world would tank. It gets real jittery, and at times, when I was docked and playing on my TV, it gave me like a weird motion sickness. I mean, as you're going like to the side and exploring the world, it would just stutter really, really bad. We're at a point where we really need a Switch 2, and I feel like this is something that we can't really excuse, especially with just how smooth other games were, like Tears of the Kingdom. Here's hoping a future update's gonna fix this, but I mean, let's be real, Pokemon Violet still runs like shit. I really don't think they're gonna update or try to fix this one, but I mean, the Switch is outdated, and really this is a reminder that we really needed to upgrade the Switch yesterday. To wrap things up, The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is not just a spin-off gimmick style Zelda game. It isn't Link just reskinned to Zelda, despite that swordsman mode. Echoes of Wisdom takes everything Nintendo has learned with all of their past Zelda games, and it really just starts to combine them into one. The game is fun, it's full of rewards, it gets your head clicking with all the different types of puzzles and different ways you can solve things. Nothing feels out of reach when you're playing this game. Playing a Zelda with all her necromancer glory is a unique fun twist on that typical Zelda gameplay style. Dungeons are back, there's a ton of echoes to learn which honestly guys does get really annoying having to sort through by the way. Combat can feel just a little dull at first, but overall the game is a great time and definitely worthy of being a mainline Zelda successor. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is a solid 9 out of 10 for me, only held back by some combat issues and that nauseating frame rate when it comes to the open world. This one is really soared to the top as like a must play for any Zelda fan. I think if you are a fan, most likely you've already bought this one,
But if you're on the fence due to maybe the gameplay style, maybe the art style, I would say don't worry. Nintendo did the Nintendo thing and they made this one work. If you made it this far, I'm super thankful for you guys. We are growing as a new channel, so every interaction does help. Drop a like, subscribe if you want to see more game reviews, and let me know what you think of the review and your thoughts on Echoes of Wisdom if you've played this one. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.